Bertuzzi is a Boston Bruin. Endless pain. J absolutely endless. Uh, uh, I, uh... All right! All right, no, we're gonna talk about it after. Think you know which way it's gonna go? Head on over to Sports Interaction. The puck drop Sports Interaction has you covered pre-game live betting on all major sports like baseball and prop bets. Wanna bet? Head over to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn and download the Sports Interaction app, but only if you're 19 plus, please play responsibly. I mean, I can't help but look at this from the Leafs perspective because there's been a lot of conversation about the arms race in the Eastern Conference. And it has been an arms race in the Eastern Conference, but the Atlantic Division is just juice. The reason I make it about the Atlantic Division is this. Let's assume the Bruins win their first round matchup, which right now is a pretty good guess. At the time I am shooting this video, the Boston Bruins have 99 points. They are first place in the NHL. The next closest team is the Carolina Hurricanes with 86. At current standing, the Boston Bruins have 13 more points than the next closest team. And if you're wondering about games in hand, Carolina has won. If they win that game, the Bruins will still be double digits in first. Carolina has 86. The next closest team is the Devils with 85. And the next closest team in the Atlantic Division is the Toronto Maple Leafs with 82. The Leafs are second in the Atlantic Division. They are 17 points behind Boston. So when Toronto and Tampa inevitably butt heads for four to seven games in the first round, and eventually that series spits out a winner, they have to take on, more than likely, the Boston Bruins. Who, after getting Garnet Hathaway, who is a perfect fit for them, and Dmitry Orlov, who is a perfect fit for them, they go out and get Tyler Bertuzzi, who is a perfect fit for them. Here's the trade. Boston Bruins acquire Tyler Bertuzzi at 50%, so 2.375 million, again, cap friendly, what would I do without you, in exchange for a 2024 first round pick, and that's conditional, with a 2025 fourth round pick. The condition on the first round pick for 2024 is it's top 10 protected. Now that's kind of interesting because this season is kind of viewed as a last dance for the Boston Bruins. I just have a hard time imagining them going from double digits from first to second and then the next season uh, they're in the top 10 pick conversation. I just, it's unlikely that that rears its head, but if it does, they've protected themselves, which is smart and basically what you expect. Now there is more to this that actually allows the Bruins to make this deal. Taylor Hall, unfortunately, is gonna be going on LTIR with a legitimate injury that is obviously gonna keep him out long enough to put him on LTIR. I'm not breaking any news here. I'm sure you can connect the dots. I've seen a lot of people connect the dots that, considering it's March 2nd, the playoffs start in about five weeks, something like that. Will Taylor Hall be back in five weeks? My bet is yes. So here's the Boston Bruins' current group of forwards according to Daily Faceoff, and this does not include Taylor Hall. Marshan Bergeron DeBrusque is the first line. Pavel Zaka with David Krejci and David Pasternak is the second line. They assume Tyler Bertuzzi is gonna go with Charlie Coyle and Trent Frederick on the third line. Ew with A.J. Greer, Thomas Nosek, and Garnet Hathaway. Hathaway's on the fourth line?! What?! It's a deep lineup and Bertuzzi fits it well. Now, what is Tyler Bertuzzi? How does he fit it well? Well, he's a decently sized player, maybe slightly above average, but he's willing to use that size. He's willing to block shots, he's willing to hit, he's willing to be a nuisance, and he can score, he can set up plays, he can forecheck, he can do a lot of things that the Bruins are already pretty good at. Now, Tyler Bertuzzi has been in some controversies in recent years. He was the only player in the entire National Hockey League who didn't take the COVID vaccine, so he couldn't play in Canada which is tough considering the Atlantic Division has three Canadian teams and he played there. Still does, actually. Last season in 68 games, he was exemplary with 30 goals, 32 assists for 62 points. Nearly a point a game player and a 30 goal score in an incomplete season. He missed a decent amount of time. This year, because of injuries, it hasn't gone quite the same. In 29 games so far, 
Bertuzzi only has four goals and 10 assists for 14 points. And I've seen a lot of people say like, oh, he's not good, he's injured, he's washed. When are you gonna learn? The Boston Bruins acquired Taylor Hall when Hall had, I, I think it was two goals from the Buffalo Sabres? I'll look it up so you don't have to. In 37 games with the Sabres, Taylor Hall had two goals and 17 assists for 19 points. In just 16 games, less than half of the games that he played with the Buffalo Sabres, in 16 games with the Bruins, Hall had eight goals and six assists for 14 points. And that's another guy, he had a snake bitten season, injury history, all that. Bruins are obviously decently confident enough that Tyler Bertuzzi is not only going to be able to play, he is going to be able to contribute to their team. He's going to be a depth piece. At very least, in the interim, he's going to be a decent Taylor Hall replacement. It's, a not, it's not a bad move. Also, it's draft picks. You think the Bruins care about draft picks right now? The story earlier in the season is how the Bruins prospect cupboard isn't exactly the most full in the NHL and that could be a problem for them because they have some older pieces and we don't know who's gonna be back next year. Now it's March and they are double digits in first place in the NHL. Their forwards got better. Their decor got better. Allmark has more goals than a bunch of players in the NHL and he's gonna win the Vezina Trophy. This is when you go for it. You, okay, let's say you stink next year. You stink and look at your cup ring, all right? You win a ring, that's what you do. All deals come with risk and you never know who's gonna get hurt when. 2021, John Tavares goes into the Stanley Cup playoffs completely healthy, game one of the playoffs, boom, concussion, neck and knee injury. It's a decent move that makes the Bruins more the Bruins that of course comes with some risk, but they're the odds on cup favorite and those odds did not go down after today. Last thing, and I might as well mention it while we're here, it's not a trade, but the Bruins did make a signing today for a player you might've heard of. The Boston Bruins sign David Pasternak Eight years, $11.25 million against the cap. That's just an enormous thing for the Boston Bruins because I think that was heavily tied to what people were thinking about them next year. Is Krejci gonna retire? Is Bergeron gonna retire? And I think even more importantly, Will David Pasternak leave for nothing? Because I think you can survive one of those things happening. I don't think you can survive all three. Even if Bergeron was to retire, finally, I mean, he's earned a rest, the Boston Bruins leadership core still stays somewhat intact. They have Pasternak, they have Marchand, they have McAvoy, they have other guys, they have the entire culture that Bergeron was a big part of building along with Zdeno Char. He's one of the best goal scorers in the league. He's one of the best goal scoring wingers in the league. He's one of the best wingers in the league. He's earned the race. The only thing that caught me off guard is I, I could have swore he said he would play for free and $11.25 million is, uh, hmm. It's not that. I kept telling him to take league minimum for the next eight years, put his money where his mouth is, and he decided to take 11.25 million, which I'm not gonna fault him for, because that's a lot of money. Would you like 11.25 million dollars in one year? I bet you would. I would. Can I take that? I would take that. Cool, he's gonna make that times eight. To quote one exchange I saw on Twitter today, a Bruins fan said, it's a great day to be a Boston Bruins fan, to which someone replied, when is it not? So. What do you think of this trade? What do you think of the signing? What do you think of the Boston Bruins' chances heading into the 2023 Stanley Cup playoffs? For now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. I think the Boston Bruins might be good.